Hey guys, Matt here, back from the prison. Tired, Wednesday night, but I gotta do a couple videos because I won't be able to do them tomorrow. Um, we had a great night. What a, just, I just praise God. We've got 130 prisoners, and it's just me and my, my faithful companion, my brother-in-law, Mark, and I praise God for Mark. He's, uh, what, a, what a help he is, what a support. 130 guys, and it was just a fantastic night. Actually, I get to, I get to share a story tonight. Uh, but let me let me read here first. We left off in three and four. First uh, Timothy one three and four, and how Paul tells Timothy, "Hey, stay in Ephesus. Why? Well, so you charge these false teachers, these these people going into different doctrines. You charge them to stop, stop teaching different doctrines. Well, why? Well, because different doctrines promote speculation rather than the stewardship from God, which is by faith." That's what, that's what false doctrines do. They promote speculation. They, they promote schism and division. And, and Paul reminds Timothy here in verse 5, the aim of our charge is love. Wow, isn't that unloving to tell people? No. That's what love does. Love steps up and, and, and gird yourself up like a man of God or a woman of God and say, hey, that's not right. That's not right. The aim of our charge is love. And where does that love come from? It's issued from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and sincere faith. It doesn't come from a critical spirit. It doesn't come from schism or division or, or ugliness or bitterness or, or trying to tear somebody down at all. That is what the false doctrines do, the false teachers do. Verse 6, certain persons, by swerving from these, swerving from what? Love that issues from a pure heart, a good conscience, and sincere faith. Certain persons, by swerving from these, have wandered away into vain discussions. That's what different doctrines do. They promote vain discussions, they promote speculations, they promote disharmony amongst the brethren. Um, verse 7, desiring to be teachers of the law without understanding either what they are saying or the things about which they make confident assertions. They don't know what they're talking about, Paul says. They're, these guys are talking about the law and they don't understand the law because if they did, they would know that the law has been fulfilled. It's done. It is finished. Jesus spread his hands on that cross and he fulfilled the law. We are not under the law. That's what Paul's saying here. Uh, and this leads us to verse 8, which is very, very important. Uh, see, that the false teachers wanted to pull these guys under the law and Paul's saying, hey, love tells the truth. Love warns. Love is issued from a pure heart and good faith. And, and it, whether it rocks the boat or not, love tells it, Timothy, I charge you to stop, tell, the, tell those guys to stop teaching false doctrine. And, and false teachers, on the other hand, they swerve from, from love. They swerve from love from a pure heart and a good conscience and, and sincere faith. They swerve from that into vain discussions. And they spend countless hours in vain discussions, wasting their ministries, wasting their time, wasting their witness. Uh, and what the, these guys were doing is they were trying to get them to come back under the law. It's interesting, um, because I made a video yesterday about, about the King James only, and I think that's a prime example. I know some people got their undies in a bunch, and that's okay, I wasn't, wasn't trying to hammer anybody over the head, I'm just telling the truth. Um, that's not of God, and, and uh, that essentially, that's very akin to bringing someone under the law, to say, you have to read the King James only, that's bringing somebody under the law. Same thing. You have to worship on Saturday. That's bringing someone under the law. You can't dance. You can't do this. You can't do that. That's bringing someone under the law. That's exactly what it is. And uh, somebody made a comment, well, what about, what about uh, pre-trib, post-trib? And I thought of that. I thought, what about pre-trib, post-trib? What about once saved, always saved? What about cessation versus continuance? Uh, are the gifts for today, or are they not? Um, you know these types of things, and uh, I think I think wh where those would fit into this is if they get so extreme that they're a different doctrine. In other words, if somebody says, "If you're a pre-tribber and you believe in pre-trib, then I don't think you're saved." That would be another doctrine. See, we can have. I believe you can't lose your salvation. If you believe you can, praise God. That doesn't break our fellowship. That. Uh, we can worship together. It changes nothing. We're going to find out when we get there. One of us is going to be wrong, for sure. And when we find out, 
we're not going to give a rip because we're going to be standing in the presence of our king, right? So these things don't have to divide us. They only divide us. They only cause schism and division and promote speculation if they become another doctrine. That's to say, if people get evil and get all warped on it and say, you have to do this. If, if you believe you can lose your salvation, you're not a Christian. That's where it becomes another doctrine. Okay, I digress. Back to verse 8. Um, this is where it gets really good for me. Uh, Paul says, now we know that the law is good if, if one uses it lawfully. I want to talk about this. Understanding this, that the law is not laid down for the just, but for the lawless and disobedient. The law isn't for us. If you're born again, you are dead to the law. You've been freed from the law. Jesus fulfilled the law, right? So we're not under the law, but the law is for the is not for the just, but for the unjust, for the lawless, the disobedient, for the ungodly, for the sinners, for the unholy, for the profane, for those who strike their fathers and mothers, for murderers, for the sexually immoral, men who practice homosexuality, enslaved. Hey, I have an ESV here, and it says men who practice homosexuality. I, I thought they didn't say that. Anyways, I digress. Enslavers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine. In accordance with the gospel of the glory of the blessed God with which I have been entrusted. So, Paul makes it clear. False teachers are trying to pull you under the law. And that's what false teachers will still do today if they add anything. If you have to do Jesus plus King James only, Jesus plus worshiping on Saturday, King, er, uh, Jesus plus anything, anything else, it's another doctrine. It's no good. We're not under the law. But what is this verse 8? He says, now we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully. I got to practice this tonight. It was awesome. I, I got bold, and uh, I asked the, the crowd, I said, okay, I need, a, I need a volunteer. I need somebody who's going to be bold and honest. I said, I need somebody who's willing to admit that they are not born again. One of the guys raised his hand. He came up, I think a Muslim guy, and uh, he came up, and I got to uh, use the law lawfully. Here's how you use the law lawfully. I said, okay, apart from your crime, I had no idea what his crime was, worked out perfectly in the end. I, apart from your crime, are you, are you a pretty good guy? Yeah, okay, you're a good person. Yeah, I'm a good person. Okay. You ever commit adultery? Yep. Oh, okay. You ever told a lie? Yep. Oh, really? Okay. You ever murdered? And he said, yeah. He, he was in for murder. I didn't know that. I said, oh, okay. Have you ever blasphemed? Went through the law with him. I said, okay, so by your own admission, you're a lying, thieving, blaspheming, murderer, adulterer. Now, do you think you're going to be innocent or guilty when you meet Jesus Christ? When you stand before the Holy God, knowing that you broke His laws? Do you think you're a good person? Do you think you're going to be okay? He kind of he kind of said, uh, I, don't, I don't know, maybe. And I said, come on, think about it. You're standing before God and you broke His laws and you just admitted it. He saw the light. The light bulb went on. I don't know what's going to happen to it, but uh, he went and sat down. I know the guys are going to be talking about that for a while. Uh, I'm not saying he's going to get saved. That's between him and God. But that's an example of how you use the law lawfully. Uh, and and this, is just, this is just really important because although at this point they're trying to get them back under the law, I think we can see that today in, in many different areas. And again, different doctrines promote speculation. Period, paragraph, and they're no good. We're not under the law anymore. We're under grace. We're under the dispensation of grace. All right. Thanks. That's all for tonight. We'll uh, pick up tomorrow on, I think, verse 12. See ya.